Thank you. Hello, everybody. And uh, I'd like to start by thanking Navy Simulation for inviting us along today. It's a, it's a pleasure and a privilege to be able to talk to you all today. I'm David Turner. I'm a, a director here at Agility3, and I'm here joining you with my colleague Mario, who is one of our software developers. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about our experiences using Scanner, and in particular, developing environments for use with the new Scanner Unreal Renderer system. I'm going to start with a, a brief introduction into to who we are and, and who are Agility3. And I'll describe a couple of, of case studies using the old legacy open scene graph visual system before handing over to Mario, who will talk to you about our experiences using the Unreal Engine. And then we'll finish up with a, a brief summary and then open the floor to some questions. So to start with, who are, who are we? Who are Agility3? Well, we are a, a UK based company. We're a, a micro SME. We've been going almost 10 years and we are based just outside of London in Hertfordshire in England. And we specialise in the bespoke development of 3D content, um, in particular, the development of virtual environments for use with simulators. And we also develop interactive 3D content, uh, 3D applications, virtual reality experiences, and uh, 3D visualisations on walkthroughs. And we work with uh, several different industries, Obviously, sat here talking to you today, road and automotive is an important market for us, but we also work in the rail domain and we also do some work for the construction and the architecture markets. So let's have a look at the first case study that I'd like to talk to you about today. So this was uh, a little while ago. This was using the old open scene graph visual system, and this particular project was all around uh, research into the safety of truck platooning. And the, the particular topic of this research was looking at the, the safety of platoons as platoons approach a motorway junction. What happens if there's a vehicle that's looking to exit the motorway at a particular junction, but a platoon of trucks is blocking their path for that exit? We were being asked to create a virtual environment that would support this trial. The challenge we had was that drivers drive at different speeds. What if if one driver catches the platoon much quicker than another driver? How can we always ensure that the platoon is blocking the exit of the motorway when they reach it? So we had a, a think about this. And we came up with an, an interesting idea. Now, normally in this particular environment, um, you can see in the screenshot there, this is a, a, a very high level view looking down onto a, a stretch of a virtual motorway. It looks like there's a, a junction every every hundred yards or so. Now, ordinarily, all those junctions would be hidden. But what we can do is as the driver and the platoon progress down the motorway. We can calculate that the, the driver is catching the platoon at a particular speed. Therefore, we know that the, the driver will catch the platoon, let's say at that point where the star is shown. Therefore, what we can do at runtime using uh, open scene graph switches we can dynamically switch in this particular junction here, therefore ensuring that the, the driver was trying to exit the motorway at the point he reached the platoon. And when we switch in the, in the virtual environment, just to give you an idea, that's what the, uh, the, the motorway, the virtual motorway would look like. So that's, that's one case study of a, an interesting project that we've, we've done recently. Uh, another case study I wanted to mention to you involves level crossing safety. Again, using the open scene graph visual system. The challenge here was to understand how different designs of level crossing impact driver safety and driver behavior. Um, the important thing here was to be able to represent the, the level crossing, the different types of barriers, and in particular, the animated closing and opening sequences of the level crossing in a representative and a controllable way so that the the level crossing sequence can start just the driver approaches that crossing. So again, we had to think about how can we do this within the, the open scene graph visual system. And again, we came up with a, a solution that uh, involved interesting uh, use of open graph, open scene graph switches. So to start with, we built a, a common in environment that was used across all of the trials. This is approximately two kilometers of, of rural road. And uh, it looked a little bit like uh, 
you see in the screenshot there. The, the level crossing is actually off there in the distance, but uh, it's not there present because we haven't constructed it in that particular screenshot. I think that the, um, the generic road took uh, just a few weeks to, to develop. And then to enable us to, to build the crossing, we created a library of animated parts that can be positioned, switched in and out and animated, rotated, moved as required and scripted to create the, the animation of the, the level crossing as externally referenced objects in Skylar. So we had uh, barrier models, we had flashing light models and, and so on, so that you can then create the, the animated level crossing, which had an appearance when constructed like you see in the image there. So that's a couple of interesting uh, case studies of recent projects using the old OpenScene graph visual system. Now, one of the things we really want to uh, talk to you about today is our experiences using the, the Unreal Engine and the new U renderer that's in the, the, the more recent versions of Scanner. And before I hand over to my colleague Mario, I wanted to set the scene a little bit for uh, where, where we've come from really in using Unreal and the fact that uh, we're, we're really excited to be using Unreal now. And this is because we've been developing environments for, for Scanner uh, using OpenScene Graph for nearly a decade now since we started the business back in 2012. Alongside that, we've also spent a similar time working with games engines, for example, Unreal Engine, uh, Unity, and it's always been a frustration that we've not been able to achieve the same level of, of visual fidelity, visual quality and immersive experiences using the open scene graph visual system because it's just it's not up to the same standard as games engines such as Unreal Engine. So it was really exciting for us when we first found out that our colleagues over at AB Simulation were working with Epic Games to, to integrate Unreal into, into Scanner. So we started using Unreal Engine with Scanner earlier this year, initially as a, a few R&D projects. And then we're pleased to say that we're just in the, the final stages of completing our first major project using the, the Unreal Renderer. And this is a project that we're working on with our client, a company called Horeba Myra here in the UK. And for those of you that, that don't know, Horeba Myra are a global provider of automotive engineering research and test services with 75 years of experience in developing some of the world's most iconic vehicles. And they help their customers to develop and test their vehicles and systems to meet the highest standards. Now, the project that we're, we're fortunate enough to be working with them on is called the Midlands Future Mobility Project. And this is a, a big project here in the UK. It's, it's to deliver a public road test bed for connected and autonomous vehicles. And it consists of more than 100 kilometers of roads within the West Midlands area of the UK. It incorporates wireless communications technology, data collection equipment, workshop facilities and support with production of a suitable safety case. And our role in the project is to develop an accurate model of a complex motorway junction on the M6 here in the West Midlands in the UK. So before I hand over to, to Mario, just wanted to, if you like, set the scene by showing you on the left hand side here, this is what our, our previous motorway uh, visual models look like using the old open scene graph visual system. And on the right hand side, that is the sort of level of quality we're now starting to achieve using the Unreal renderer with Scanner using Unreal. So keep that in mind as I hand over now to Mario. Hello everybody, my name is Mario Bagnoli. Um, I am a software engineer at Agility3. We are really proud to be part of the early adopters and first content creators of the new Scanner U Render module. This integration allows to take advantage of the leading game and virtual development engine on real technology to create realistic environments for Scanner users. Our main goal is to create realistic and immersive environments. And within my presentation, I'm going to divide it into the two subgroups. I'm going to talk about our experiences as a content developer using Unreal technologies and how we were able to use Unreal to convert it into a scanner model. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, how Unreal helped us to improve the development workflow, how helping us to create quick prototyping and development, and how it's really good for its versatility and high customization level. 
And then I will move on onto the power of Unreal and how we harness the power of, to create realistic looking graphics. And I'm gonna mention state of the art rendering techniques that are available in Unreal, how we are used physics-based rendering or PBR materials, and how we are able to create realistic and natural looking lighting. Due to its ease of use, um, using um, game engine technologies allows to create quick prototypes by blocking up the environment or the uh, overall level layout. This helps us to identify what will be the best development approaches and also allows to identify potential risk at early development stages. So it allows to create rapid testing and progressive iterations. Um, something that we really like about using Unreal is that it allows to have immediate feedback of the changes done in the virtual environment. And this is really important for us, as I mentioned before, to be able to identify what will be the best approaches to carry on forward and to identify potential risks. Um, one thing that we're really happy as well is that Scanner, uh, AV simulation to develop a scanner plugin that will allow you to export the environment from Unreal to Scanner. So that make it really easy for deployment and integration with the scanner simulator. At Agility3, we have, as my colleague Dave mentioned, a experience with a large variety of software for content creation for uh, developing virtual environments. Using Unreal allows us to create um, content conti by continuing using familiar tools and file types that are standard across different type of industries. Um, some of the file types you might be familiar. So for example, we have uh, OpenFly, FBX, we, we can use three max and we use, use Substance, which is a lead uh, software for creating realistic material and realistic texture. And thanks now to Unreal, we also have access to Megascan library and I'm gonna talk about that later. And another great advantage of using a game engine technology, especially on real, is that um, it's great versatile. It allows to use the same tools to develop a large variety of different type of virtual environments, virtual applications, and that will help us to meet different type of requirements for a large variety of customers. Another thing that we really like about Unreal is that it has a very large and active development community that translates into an active forum where we can share or knowledge asking questions uh, or answer questions as well. And it also has a very large marketplace that allows to uh, purchase or get access to um, models or tools that we can integrate in Unreal straight away. Now I'm going to talk about the, how at Agility3 we try to harness the power of Unreal to create realistic looking graphics. And one of the main advantages in terms of visuals for using Unreal is that it offers out of the box a high fidelity visuals. As you can see in this animated GIF that I have in the background is a um, digital image. And other, other game engines can achieve similar quality, but it requires extra development time. Um, one of the tools that we're using for um, developing environments, realistic looking environments, is taking advantage of the optimized vegetation. And also a tool that is called foliage painting, which basically allows the developer to paint different meshes of uh, vegetation, like trees, grass, bushes, straight in engine in the area that you want to cover. This saves development time. Um, now I'm going to talk about uh, some of the state of the art rendering techniques that allow us to uh, improve development time as well. One of the tools that we heavily use in the project that my colleague Dave mentioned for Holy Myra is called Vertex Painting. This allows to create, uh, to paint different type of texture directly in the engine, directly in the editor. Um, this allows to create very nice looking and very nice transition between, for example, concrete um, a vegetation or concrete uh, from the roads to central reservations. 
And another tool that um, allows to improve performance of the visual is called DLSS, which is a deep learning super sampling. It's a tool developed by NVIDIA, which basically is an anti-aliasing method that smooths the jagged edges that could show on the borders of the graphics. Um, this is a very nice tool because it allows to have a improved performance by keeping the same level of quality. And another thing that I want to talk about is that thanks to uh, using Unreal, Unreal has support for native custom optimization technique. So, for example, Unreal can handle a, a complex and large virtual environments. This is a screenshot that we took from the Body of Myra project, and I believe it's a two by two kilometers area. It not only is a large environment, but it's a really rich environment is full of vegetation, full of uh, traffic assets, a very nice uh, and realistic lighting, for example, for BMS displays, for traffic lights. And Unreal can handle that. And as a developer, it's really important that we have um, a tool that allows to modify the assets without struggling. And Unreal can handle that. Another tool that we're using, thanks to the power of Unreal, is occlusion and, and frustum calling. This is basically a tool that allows to hide objects that are not within the field of view of the camera. This allows to keep high quality graphics without affecting performance. Another tool that comes out of the box from Unreal is efficient level of detail creation, and which automatically creates uh, different versions of the same model at different quality levels. Um, the further away an object is from the camera, the lower quality that object will have. This allows, once again, to keep high quality graphics without affecting performance. Um, one thing that we're really excited about uh, using Unreal for creating content for scanner users is that now we have access to a developing pipeline that uses PBR material. PBR stands for physically based rendering, which basically means that it's a material that describes visual properties of a surface in a physical way that realistically uh, and dynamic react to the lighting of the virtual environment. Um, by using a combination of PBR materials and the Unreal Lighting, now we can use a single material or a single texture as well for different time of the days. I believe in the past the artist needed to create a material or a texture for, for example, for day, for night, for a mission. Now all of that long process is taken care by the combination of using PBR materials and Unreal Lighting. And last thing in terms of PBR materials is that by using Unreal, an Unreal developer have access to Megascan libraries, which is basically a very large library of assets like 3D models, materials, and textures that are PBR calibrated and are optimized in terms of topology, UVs, and level of details, that means that as a developer, we can just drag and drop those assets and just taking care about the overall look of the scene rather than taking care of the quality of the materials because we know that Megascan materials are high quality. Finally, the last point that I want to talk about is the, um, how using Unreal allow us to create natural looking lighting. Um, as I mentioned before, Unreal uh, provides out of the box uh, realistic looking lighting. And if we combine the, this realistic, look, realistic looking lighting with the PBR materials, we're able to create scenes that are realistic and natural looking. All of the materials that are on the scene, they're gonna dynamically react to the lighting on the scene. Um, this allows us to create, as you see on the animated GIF, realistic day and night cycles as well. Um, you can see from the screenshot that we have, we have emission materials, we have a vertex painting from the road to the central reservation, we have nice looking vegetation, and all of this is thanks to the power of Unreal. 
and things of the work done by AV Simulation, we were now able to have this level of quality in a scanner simulation. Um, thanks to that as well, um, we have improved weather effects. In, if it's sunny, windy, rainy, we, we, we could see that in a virtual environment. Um, I think that concludes my part of the presentation. I will now pass the torch back to my colleague Dave. Thanks, Mario. So we knew there. So just to wrap wrap things up now, um, we're obviously very very excited to be using Unreal and the the Unreal rendering system within Scanner. We feel that it has uh, opened up far more realistic and representative visuals and a much more lifelike user experience. And with that come new opportunities, for example, uh, more realistic sensor simulations, which means better understanding of how sensors and systems react in the real world, better research related to lighting and reflections, for example, warning drivers of, of hazards or, or perhaps how natural lighting affects drivers. More representative weather effects that could open up a, another line of research. There are some limitations to be aware of. For example, we understand that currently, I think the uh, Unreal Renderer only supports a single channel, although we've just been told that there is a, a new version that is, is coming soon and that does support multi-channel. So that's, that's going to be uh, not a limitation any longer fairly soon. Um, and there are some uh, additional development activities to be aware of when you're using the Unreal system, but there are also some time saving methods that come with that. So overall, we would definitely recommend, particularly where lights and lighting is important and current limitations aren't an issue, we would de definitely recommend using the Unreal Visual System. Um, there is a an automated conversion tool to take your legacy databases and convert them to work with Unreal, but our recommendation would be rather than using that automated process, we would suggest that you, you go through a manual conversion process because the, the end results that you get, I think really um, they're worth the extra investment because of the extra realism that you get with that. So to conclude, we'll certainly be following progress as new releases get made and making the most of the new features that uh, Unreal and Scanner bring. And we're certainly very happy to, to help others and to share our experiences. And thank you for listening at that point. Uh, I'll open things up for, for any questions.